back at it again with another podcast of Kuya Talk, eh? By the water, hopefully that's recording. If it's not, then we'll just do a fucking audio podcast. I'm here again with my guest Jordan. What's going on, buddy? Not much. Living life. That's really it. It's a beautiful Friday morning. I'm trying to shoot a podcast before we go to the fucking go to work. Yeah, the pre-work podcast. Yeah, that's some Gary V type mentality. Yeah, yeah. Work every day. And what's with new with you? Uh, not much, man. Honestly, like, just been thinking a lot about life. Oh, same. I had an epiphany a few days ago. Actually. I saw that one post where you saw uh, you posted that cycle of just like the work. nine to five rat race. Yeah, the nine to five rat race. So, know what I real- that. know what I realized? Like, we're both in, we both are in university or graduate university, so it's not like we're just flaming, like, we're not, it's not like we're just, like, doing nothing and just flaming university degrees, right? But I'm at that point, like, with the job, with how bad the job market is, with how saturated it is, and how bad the housing market it is, like, it's impossible to buy a house. Then it's like, if you can even get a job, then that's good enough, right? At least to our standards of kids our age. Then to the extent of, like, like, I made this analogy, it's like, Essentially, like, getting a job is like getting into a frat party. They don't care about your GPA. They just care about if you know nobody at the frat party. And if you don't, then you're not getting into the frat party, right? So oh, it's literally yeah. just all about connections. And re- that's, like, one of the harsh reali- realizations I came to. I don't know. I mean, like, if you have to flame your degree, you have to flame your degree. I but mean, no, that's not just no... my... De- it's like, I feel like that applies to a lot of degrees, though, right? Like, it's really just it depends on, like, who you know. Yeah, I mean, listen, I picked this degree when I was fucking like 16 15, years 16, old. right? Like, I don't even think I'd be friends with, like, the 15, 16 That's what I'm saying. Team. So, like, if like, I have to flame this degree, I have to flame this degree. In grade 10, like, it's amazing how in grade 10, you, like, the civic, in civics careers, they come and say, hey, guys, like, you have to pick your courses, like, in grade 10. And if you don't take the pre- prerequisites you need, then you can't get into the, the uh, 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 major you want, right? Yeah. And like, that's so, like... That's what I'm saying, like, man, 16-year-old me really wanted to become, like, the major... I, then it's, like... Like, that's what I was, like, I don't even want... Am I even... Would I even be friends with that kid? Yeah, and, like, realistically, there is no timeline. Like, yeah. if you live until you're 80, that means you have 60 more years to exactly. do, like, anything you want. And, like, to me, that's, like... That's a that's good true. amount of time. And there's a thing, it's, like... Like, how we can't even drive yet, but we're picking at what our career, what we want our career to be, like, by the time we're, like, 20, 30 years old, right? Yeah, dude. It's, like, school sort of just throws all this, like, it, stupid eh? bullshit I know. at you, and it's just like, hey, <laughs> if you can put up with this, you'll do great. And it's, like, like, my friends, all of them, like, some of them got screwed. It's, like, they took the wrong, they, like, they uh, go for this program, right? Then it's, like, oh, I don't want to do this program anymore. Can I search? It's like, oh, you didn't take grade 12 biology, you? Like, you can't take it. It's like, then it's like, I don't know. That's such a tough moment. You're in grade yeah. 12, it's like, oh, you didn't take grade 12 biology, you? Oh, there's no spot to take it? Okay, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, like, honestly, to a lot of people, like, you could just say fuck it to school. Yeah. Like, you can make so, you can make such a meaningful life and you can make money doing literally anything. Creative economy. Like yeah. this, the podcast. Bro, like, even any sort money. of entrepreneur today, like, when they started their business like they it didn't exist at, yeah exactly they made it exist see and that's gonna apply to like a lot of us now. and that's the whole idea of like uh, oh i'm gonna do this tomorrow or i'm gonna start this tomorrow like the hardest part is saying you're gonna start it it's like going to the gym the hardest habit to start is trying to say oh i'm going to the gym tomorrow you know what? i'll just go the next day but once you start it then getting into that habit that routine it's so you much easier right yeah you sort of like create that neurological path in mm. your mind that like associates like good outcome with going to the gym yeah so then it becomes almost just like a natural instinct of survival and same thing with like uh this pod podcasting right like there's someone every guy group at one point like at 2 2 a.m it's like guys imagine if we made a podcast then they still uh, like, i mean like think t- a, think about what that means though it's like at a certain point guys just decide hey let's just have conversations and exactly like, and record it right and like so record relatable. them and make them meaningful like and there's relatable, nothing wrong right? with communicating ideas if anything guys have to do it more, more often. often yeah so to anyone who like you know shits on podcasts i'm just saying like it's hey awesome. it's like give it a chance take a listen it's some good stuff it's the realest way to listen to a conversation to really understand who somebody is 
Oh, 100 percent. Like, in what other time of day do you ever sit down and have a conversation with someone? Like, literally schedule a conversation. Uh huh. And it's like, it's cool because it's like, well, like the whole idea of a podcast is trying to develop a topic, trying to see where the conversation leads. Then like it uncovers like parts of you, right? Then like so many parts of me that I talk to you, I wouldn't talk to like another person, right? Then that person listens to this conversation. It's like, oh, I never knew you had those type of like perspectives on things, right? It's literally like talk therapy. Like a lot of times people have this sort of like these issues brewing inside of them and that they, they don't know how to deal with, but all they really need is just someone to give them the space to talk about mm-hmm. it. Like when I, you know, I'm with my buddies, like there are times where we have a conversation where I don't say anything just because I want to give them the space to say whatever they need to say mm-hmm. because it, in other parts of their life they feel like they don't have that space especially as guys as guys growing up i feel like guys own like this is a i feel like this is such a real issue but people don't like it's so undershadowed right but guys we're not in like today's society at least in like canada america like it's not as open to like open dialogue amongst other men about mental health is so like underrated especially like i remember i was talking to my friend he just he was going through a tough moment like oh like uh like why, it's like why didn't you uh, post this on your Insta like a private Instagram right it's like oh because I want the homies knowing I'm sad but at the same time like your homies are your support system right it's like you know if you it's it's a really t- complicated conversation it is it is and like you know there's always that fear of abandonment fear of judgment yeah you know like you feel like you feel weak when you talk about those things yeah. but like and it's tough because sometimes it's too late right and that's the biggest too late regret. for a lot of people, yeah. I mean, like, at that point, like, you look at the outcomes of people who just bottle it up, and either they, like... Do bad... They, it leads to bad consequences. It creates a bad out- outcome. So, realistically, like, it doesn't hurt to talk about things, and, you know, if your homies judge you for... Then, whoa, the you need you new said, homies. They, yeah, then it's like, dude, you need new homies. Because, mm-hmm. like, brotherhood is not putting each other down when you mm-hmm. find someone at their weak point. It's just mm-hmm. like, you see a brother down and you're like, hey man. Pick him back up. Like, let's 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 work on you. Like, yeah. I am here for you. Let's do something that brings you up. And there's always like, there's always that one point when you're hanging out with the homies at like 2 a.m. Everyone's just slosh and like, real shit starts talking. Like, people start talking about real like, shit. Like, all this, all this like, ego stuff. Like, just goes out ego, the drain. Like, you're just, it just melts away once mm-hmm. that 2 a.m. Once you get like, tired enough mixed with yeah, like, you're just chilling. sort of like, the pumped up energy of the boys like you sort of get this weird mixture of like yeah talking about your feelings with the boys but you're not like super emotional you're just yeah. sort of like it's being like, real it's like yo bro like i want you to know like i love you but like that type yeah, of energy yeah. it's like honestly bro like i haven't said this in a while but it's just like the whole it just starts feeding oh yeah it's like everyone's just because like do you feel these things and like if you don't say them now like who knows if you'll have an opportunity exactly, to say it bro. later like, okay, I think, like, does, you know how they say life is short? I feel like if you're living your best life, life is short. But if you're living your worst life, life is long. That's yeah. how I'd like to say it. Because, like, when you're in pain, man, the only thing you can think about is pain. Exactly. So it just prolongs all of it. Mm-hmm. But, like, you know, when you're just, like, living life, like, you're just in the moment. Every day feels like, like, like you know what I mean, so fast. Yeah, and, like, you know what? There's nothing wrong with not knowing what you're going to do that day. Mm-hmm. Like, today I woke up. I didn't really know what I was doing today. Yeah, and then sort of all of this happened, and it's been turning out to be a great day. And look so at far. the vibe! Like, well, like you can't see Toronto, but Toronto's like right down the lake from us. Yeah, I mean, you see this blessed resource that you mm-hmm. know we have in Canada, the Great Lake. Lake. It's Ontario, so slept though. Like, like we can go to the lake, like down the street. There's a body of water, then like such a vibe. Yeah, it's. You know, you come out here to just enjoy nature just enjoy you know the life that you're giving it's just weird like either you go through life thinking nothing's a miracle or you go through life thinking everything's, everything's a, a miracle and it's those so many times where it's like either or type of mentality I mean, yeah there's all like you know moderation and in everything including moderation mm-hmm. so like yeah it's a balance between different states but you know it doesn't hurt to think everything's a miracle yeah everything's a blessing because those ways, like, you can look at your life right now and think it's so shitty, which, like, it can be, right? Like, who yeah, am I to judge? For sure. But you can also look like, like, oh, like, I have, like, at least I have my family. Or, like, at least I have my dog. At least I have this. Because, like, so last night, Kanye West was about to drop an album called Donda. Yeah. If I screw it up, it's going to be so bad. But it's about dedicated to it. That's his mother's name. So, 
there was like there was this uh he made one of the songs in college dropout called hey mama and it was supposed to be the most uplifting song right the, it's like very up, uh uh very happy but then when his mother passed that song meant to have that song now has so much meaning it's now one of like not depressing but one of the most meaningful songs off his album and it's like sad because like like i said like i can't imagine losing my mom right and like yeah. that's one of those blessings that you have to like look at now that's what I mean. Like, that's why I always tell people to practice gratitude. Mm-hmm. Because it's so hard to find something that you're not looking for. Mm-hmm. But if you're actively looking for things to be grateful about and you're practicing gratitude every day, like, then it becomes easy to see, you know, all these great things in your life versus, yeah. like, right. if you're not yeah. looking for it, the only thing that's going to, like, really pop at you is anything that brings up an emotional response. Yeah. And that's mainly anything that brings up, like, any emotional trauma that's yeah, usually trauma. what you gravitate yeah. towards so then then you just realize your life is shit mm-hmm. but like there's ways to look at life it's it's just how you frame it your life is your life it's what it, it is what it is it's just however you look at it like at the like you know what i mean like like how you're like 23 22 22 you're 22 i'm 19 like like this could be our perspective now but 10 years down the line if, like if I was doing pod, still doing podcasts it could be a totally different mindset I mean I hope it's a fucking different mindset yeah I hope so too like, I feel like at the age of 50 you just stop giving like a fuck like there's like when you're getting a tattoo it's like aren't you gonna worry about like what people are gonna think of you when you're 50 it's like if I'm 50 why do I care about what an 18 year old's thinking about my tattoo sleeve right yeah dude tattoos are sick I was thinking about getting one I mean like I I like, am like actively thinking about I it. want one too but like I have eczema yeah it was bad so we'll see we'll see i but, mean like it, it goes down to like expressing yourself you know facts and just having mean of meaningful things you want to carry around with you like yeah because yeah. like i think i am like you know like each and every one of us is such a unique being individually yeah. individually but like you know if you just look at someone and you don't talk to them how are you gonna know that mm-hmm. but like i feel <laughs> that tattoos are a great a great way to just like signal to other people like this is what i'm about yeah these are some things that have meaning to me and like that creates you know a, dot, a, yeah. a person like with many different aspects and dimensions and also just like a point of connection for other people yeah but and it's also like it's all about perception right because a lot of people a lot of cultures like even our own culture i feel like in philippines it's viewed as a a deviant well like well like it's very it's very traditional but yeah. also oh, yeah, in modern, some, yeah, yeah. modern society it's seen as like a deviant a deviant but it's I only mean, breaking that stigma though right it's just like people are people are easily scared of other people mm-hmm. and like a lot of times tattoos are associated with like deviance yeah and so we've sort of just accepted that. Yeah, because I don't... like, it's not, I, it's not true. Yeah. You know, the kids with tattoos, you talk to them, it's like all about that false perception. You talk to this guy, it's like, oh, this guy's probably so intimidating. You talk to him, it's like, oh, hey, man, what's going on? Yo, this guy's like actually cool. And that's like with everybody, right? Because we were talking about this on the way here. Like, it's only awkward in the scenario in your mind. But once you speak it, once you start that conversation, then it's not awkward. It's not weird at all. Yeah, like, we're everyone's so afraid to just talk to someone randomly, but, mm-hmm. like, you know, me working at Lulu, like, my job is literally approaching people and yeah. connecting with guests, and through that, I've sort of realized that, like, none of it, none of this awkward shit actually, like, applies. Yeah, yeah. Nothing's actually awkward until you make it awkward, but mm-hmm. if you just go in and you just genuinely want to talk to someone, it's gonna <laughs> happen. Mm-hmm. And, like, you're gonna, as long as you just allow the, allow what you think to flow, and you just be respectful, and you you be mindful with your words like it's a conversation's gonna happen whether it be long or short you don't know yeah. but like it's a blessings. good place to start yeah one of and the... like you know you you approach like there's so many times where i've gone into a converse conversation with a guest and like i feel like this guy's gonna be an asshole but then like you talk to him and you realize like this guy's super chill and mm-hmm. like there are times at work where like people have offered me like you know they're a job in yeah. terms of like hey, I know you do photography. Yeah, Here's yeah. Here's my number. Because, like, if I ever need something, like, that's building guest connection. Mm-hmm. And, like, you have regulars that go to the store, and, like, when you see them, they know you by name. Mm-hmm. And, like, you're you're depriving yourself of that joy <laughs> by creating these false judgments on exactly. other people that you don't know yet. Yeah. And, like, that's what I'm saying. Is like, if you, like, imagine if, like, that one time in, like, oh, at one point of your life in high school, if you never had that conversation with somebody, that would have never been your best friend, right? Yeah, literally. 
Like they're like think about all your best friends, all of your and friends. And how did that start? Right? How did those how did those relationships start? Especially mm. like the ones in university because I find that in university it's so much harder to find friends versus like yeah. in elementary school you're kind of just like you're, forced you're in my class, it, yeah. let's be friends. But like in university it's like cuz all of my university friends when I first saw them I like instantly beef and then, like, once I started talking to them, I was like, wow, you guys are chill. Yeah. Nice. There's this one thing I saw on TikTok. It's like, uh, it's like, it's like if you think about it, all your university friends, the only reason why you're friends is because one day you all decided to take the same, you all wanted to take, uh, go to the same school. Right? Yeah. Like, if my friends didn't go to Laurier, then, like, I would have never met them. Well, if they never went to, like, and think about coincidences. Like, if I never went to the dining hall, if I never went to the dining hall that one, at, like, that 12.35, I would have made that, never made that one friend, right? Like, think about, you know, you meet someone and you're friends with them on the basis that you go to the same school, but and, like, you create a meaningful relationship through that. Yeah. But think about if you meet someone who has the same commitment to life as you and what sort <laughs> of meaning that can add to your life and their life. Literally, it's all about, it's like, it's all about who you surround, like, we sound, this sounds so corny, but it's so real, like, at least for me, like, but it's so, like, it's not the place, it's the people. Like, yeah. it's about the people you surround, like, like look, you can be you can have the shittiest job, but if you have people there and you like you love hanging out with them, then the job's not that bad, right? And that Literally. same goes with life, because if you have people that you vibe with, it's so uplifting. But if you're surrounding yourself with people you don't vibe with, then it's draining. Yeah, I agree, hundred percent. Amen, brother. Fair enough. But like, look, like it's a Friday. It's beautiful. Like we're working today, but that doesn't matter. Like that could be bad, but like we're making money. I mean, like, to me, especially, like, at Lulu, like, work isn't work. Mm. It feels a lot more kind of just, like, a fun activity. Yeah. Like, what do I do all day? I just, like, hop around from people to people and talk. Yeah. And then, like, I talk about product, which I'm, like, I'm a nerd. Yeah. So, like, whenever, like, we receive new product with new technical information, like, just learn it. Yeah. And, like, I'm, I, I guess I'm very good at creating scenarios in which you would like to you would need a certain product i guess i'm good at selling stuff mm -hmm. i think because like i overthink a lot so i create a lot of unnecessary scenarios yeah. in my mind that makes me justify my actions but then when i talk to others and i like communicate at work you know i can create scenarios in my mind that other people may find themselves in mm -hmm. in order to sell a product yeah. and like to me that's just a fun activity it's kind of just like what I do to myself. Because that's anyway. how you framed your mind to it, right? Yeah. Because you could have looked, you could go to, like, you could have run into Lulu with such a negative mindset, but what's that going to do to you? I right? mean, I did when I first started yeah. working there. I went in there being like, oh, I have an engineering degree. Look yeah. at me. Like, why am I in retail? Like, yeah. But then you realize, like, holy shit, even though I have an engineering degree, I literally don't know how to talk to people. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, Lulu's a great place to learn how to talk yeah. to people. And this is, like, the whole idea with, like, you need to finish your degree, you need to get a job. But like, you're 22 years old. Like, I know tomorrow's not a promise, but like, you literally have like 60 more years to go. Like, I mean, mean, like, what I like, that's true. Like, tomorrow, tomorrow's not promised, but like, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that I am on this earth to learn lessons. And once I learn all those lessons, that's my time. Yeah. And so I'm just going through life, just trying to learn as much as I can, do as much as I can, and when it happens it happens because it's gonna happen yeah literally it's like all of like everything like if you think about it at least for me every blessing that's happened to me was so it was like out of the blue it was unexpected so it's yeah kind of that's that's literally manifesting yeah so law of like attraction. you don't you don't seek out all these great things these things to be gratitude to practice gratitude on or just to be grateful for they sort of just you give off the energy and, and so the out, universe yeah. responds with you know reciprocal yeah. energies see when i was, if i if i ever heard myself speaking like this when i was in grade 12 i'll be like this kid's a fucking idiot but yeah. after going through like after two three more years of like life you start to realize that like i don't know it's more like it's not if anything it's a healthier mindset than what i was in previously right yeah you start to learn how much of it was actually just like conditioning by the school system yeah and then you start to realize that like once you exit like schooling and just like a system to like you know contain you yeah. as a human you start to realize how free life can actually be mm -hmm. 
and how much of these like mental constructs we have and like you have to do a job yeah you have to pay taxes you have to like start a family you have to be in a relationship you have the to, rat like, race right yeah the rat race but like you can still contribute to society while living a meaningful life mm -hmm. it's just that you're not going to be doing what society wants you to be doing mm -hmm. you know like I've had so many thoughts on what I want to do with my life versus, like, you know, being a photographer, mm -hmm. just working, like, for a non-for-profit and just doing meaningful shit. But, yeah. like, you know, it just comes down to, like, what do you find meaningful in your life? And that's the thing. Because one thing I took, I took, a, I took an anthropology class. Then it wasn't, like, for, for, uh, for Betum, But he's like, if you think about it, success. Like, if, ever, if I asked every one of you what success is, you're going to have a different answer. Success is a different success has a different definition for every person. So why do we judge others on what their definition of success is, right? Yeah. Like there is no timeline. Yeah. There's your timeline and you are exactly where you are supposed to be at the moment. Yeah. There's no like there's literally nothing telling you that you're supposed to be anywhere else than where you are right now. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that like a lot of people don't realize that or they don't like acknowledge it. And so they think that where they are in life, whether it be like literally where they are or where they are, like, you know, in terms of finance, yeah, yeah. relationships, like career, like they think they are inadequate, but like you are exactly where you are meant mm -hmm. to be. And from there, you can just pick whatever you want to do. Mm. I think one of the things like I'm on, like I'm on TikTok, I'm on the entrepreneur side, like I see Gary Vee and all this stuff. And I think one thing I take away from that is like, the one thing that entrepreneurs have is that it's, uh, that mindset of like if I'm in a shitty place it's up to me to take myself out of this position because at the end of the day it, the only person that cares about myself is my is me right so if I want to if I'm in a shitty situation I gotta put myself out of this it's only up to me to put myself out of this scenario because right? every like you look at all these successful people and some of them so, some of them start off with wealth right like their parents had money or some of them were literally like down bad had no money in their bank account and say you know what it's, I'm in a shitty situation, but I have confidence in myself and I have confidence in what I'm about to do. And what it takes me is like, we'll see from there. Yeah, literally. I mean, when you're at like the bottom, you there's, can only nowhere go but, up. there's nowhere to go but up. Me and Neil's been telling each other that a lot lately. Like, literally, you got nothing to lose, shoot for the stars. It doesn't hurt. Yes, we got to try. Okay. Yeah, it's like, life is like, if we're really on some zen shit, life is so unique in the things of, like... You can do so many things, like, obviously with, like, the limitations of money, but, like... Like, going to this, like, wait, what we're doing I mean, right like, now, it's free. I mean, like, the thing is, though, like... Think about this, like... Who benefits from you thinking that you can't do something because you don't have money? Exactly. Like, you know, you think that you need money to be happy, but you don't. Mm -hmm. Like, there's nothing stop, like... I do think money is... I don't think money is happiness, but I do think money solves a lot money of issues. Money is comfort. Like, yeah. But beyond, like, money solves money problems. Yeah. But once you don't have any money problems... Then other shit kicks in. Nothing, like, throwing money at depression isn't going to solve your depression. Yeah. Solving, like, throwing money at anxiety isn't going to solve your anxiety. Mm -hmm. Like, if anything, you're just going to end up with, like, a lot of shit you don't need. Yeah. Unless and if you're, you're putting that money distracted. to help. But if you're putting it into short things, like... Like, uh, things that just get your mind off of it, then it's not going to help. Like, I say, like, I remember I saw this comment on TikTok. It's like, Kanye West is an example of, like, money doesn't buy happiness. Because, like, as of, like, like for a while, he's been going through so much mental health issues. And he's one of the richest people in, like, richest people ever. One of the most, considered one of the most successful people in the music industry, shoe industry. And yet, he's not even, like, he's not contempt, right? At least that's from my perspective of reading what Kanye's going through. But like, yeah, money doesn't buy happiness. It doesn't. It's like, you have to decide if your life experience is meaningful. Yeah. And once you realize that life is meaningful, like just life <laughs> itself is meaningful, then that's a great start. Yeah, literally. It's a great start to like, you know, build towards something that is the best version of yourself and yeah like that's what the whole part of life is being the best version of yourself like going to the gym if going to the gym makes you happy then go to the gym right and it's like like i said it's like yeah. it's the idea of starting because like oh i can just go to the gym tomorrow or i can just go the next day but once you get into the habit of going to the gym then you start seeing yourself become better more fit lifting more then it's so rewarding to yourself because like at the end of the day the only person that did it was yourself right 
And it's so, especially if you had a shitty day, then you go to the gym, then you had a good gym session, you leave that day, because you get the, like, you get adrenaline, you get the endorphins, and, and you feel yeah. so, like, post-gym vibes. It's, yeah. It's nothing. No, it's also great. Different. Like, once you, like, I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast mm-hmm. with, uh, I forget his first name, but it's, like, Dr. Huberman. Okay. And he base he's a neurologist, and, like, I'm just, like, paraphrasing a lot of this stuff, but. He talks about how, you know, exercise in the morning is a great way to start the day because yeah. it brings your body up to temperature. Mm-hmm. And then from there, there's like a whole slew of health benefits. And I think one of the things he was talking about was it sets your internal timer to release melatonin in your body. Yeah. Like hours later when you're when you're supposed to go to sleep. So not only do you get like all those endorphins to enhance your day, mm-hmm. but you're also going to get a better melatonin spike or spike whatever the yeah. fuck. At night, when it's time to go to bed, it fixes it, it like helps with circadian rhythm. Yeah, I think so like basically, like exercise in the morning is great. Yeah, because I remember so before studio, I had all my classes morning to afternoon, right? So the only time I went to the gym was at nighttime. Yeah. Then I then I was like, that's the my that's normal to me. But then second year, I went to the gym at like 11 a.m. Then I was like, honestly, I feel so much better. I feel so much refreshed. I got something done. And it's like I can't yeah. imagine what it was like. I can't imagine how I went to the gym at nighttime. At like 6 p.m., 8 p.m. Yeah. But yeah, it feels better. But like there are moments when you go, go to the gym at night, like looking for some like a revenge arc type of thing, then it oh, feels nice. yeah. You put yeah, like yeah, Sadness yeah. and Sorrow by Naruto stuff pumping. Yeah. I mean, I feel like a lot of my <clears throat> success in like the sort of strength sport mm-hmm. was based on post trauma, like past trauma that I was sort of trying to hide from by like masking it by being more adequate yeah. in other areas of life to mask inadequacies in other areas of my life mm-hmm. and then one sort of covid kicked me out of lifting and you just had to force me to like look at my life for yeah. what it is like i started to realize like yeah like, holy shit i was just like using yeah. the gym as a scapegoat but like i, feel like I do agree that do it's good too. to like you yeah. know have those times you know like in the gym where you're just angry and you're like using it as an outlet but yeah. like it's better than it's better to do that than bottle it up, right? Yeah, it's better to do that bottle up, bottle it up. But at the same time, like you need to address. Yeah, uh, you definitely like, need to going talk through. to somebody, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, there's always a time and a place. But like, if you have deeper things, you know, controlling your life, it's hard to receive what's meant for you if you don't let go of those past things. Oh yeah, like like you said, it's like your past doesn't need you. Your future does, type of thing, right? Yeah, like, yeah, you need to be healed to receive what's meant for you. Yeah, oh, th- that's deep as fuck, actually, like, I agree with that, because I always see that type of stuff on TikTok. Back at it again. <laughs> I hate how, like, we only have a 40-minute cap, so I have to keep, I have to keep doing that, and it ruins, like, the flow of the conversation, right? Eh? Uh. It's all meant to be. Yes, so apply that mindset to life, you know? Yeah. What's another? Oh, I saw, I was listening to this other podcast, and it's like, they said, like, when pe- judge, like, when people judge others, that judgment, ju- that, when people judge others, the judgment is often a projection of their own insecurities. Yeah, like, no, damn. literally. It's like, for a while, I was like, why am I so, like, why do I get so peeved when people cut me off? And I'm always like, Oh yeah, I'm on a high ho- I'm on a high moral horse because I let people talk. Like mm-hmm. that was sort of like a lot of the narrative that I was like speaking to myself before, but then I realized like that was mainly me projecting my insecurities because I grew up in a household where I wasn't heard. Yeah. And like there was a very distinct language barrier which mm-hmm. enhanced that which like you know, going up in it made that thing. problem even worse. Yeah. And like I realized I was just projecting my trauma onto others. See, that's some like real shit you need to have conversations with, your, with yourself to understand, eh? Yeah, and like the thing is a lot of people don't want to say that to themselves because I feel they have like their ego. Mm-hmm. And their ego is like, no, no, you're you're good, like you're good, yeah, you're good, like yeah, you're you a good being, you you're a good person. But you. like no, like I was I was a terrible person before. Mm-hmm. I went through a lot of trauma and you need the only way to address it is to acknowledge it. I think, like, a lot of things, like, uh, if you go through t- tough shit, you only come out better. And it's up to you to come out of that situation better because 
Like, don't get me wrong, like, if you're in a bad spot, it's hard to get out, especially if you have a bad mindset. But realistically, if you're able to come out of that, if you're able to go through adversity, then you're going to come out of a better human being, and you're going to come out with a more, you're going to come out with a more enlightened mindset. It's like, man, like, what happened to me is such a shitty situation, and, like, now, like, why, if, I, if I'm ever put in the position to bring positivity in other people's lives, then I will, because I want any other body, any other person to go through negative shit like me, right? Yeah, like, you are able to, it. like, all of us are basically able to endure. It's just that none of us have allowed ourselves to, like, go through it. Mm -hmm. Like, none of us have allowed ourselves to just, like, <laughs> sit with our so like, thoughts just, and just, yeah. like, acknowledge, you know, the shitty things that we've done. Mm -hmm. But... It's, more like, one of those things, yeah. like, if you, like, after, like, a football game, if you lose... You don't tell yourself, man, that was a good game. Like, I did everything I did, needed to do to do my best job. No, you go back and you're like, I fucked up those things that can, I can improve on. So next time I'm in that situation, next time I'm on that football field, I'm going to be a better version of myself. Yeah. You go, like, it's just the growth mindset. And sometimes yes. it's just the input, like, losing or, like, going through shit is the impetus you need to just, like, reevaluate and look at yourself. But then... You know, sometimes you don't need that. Mm -hmm. It's literally just, like, through things like meditation. Yeah. Where you can discover these things about yourself. Or journaling. Journaling, like, I, too. I, I, I journal a lot, actually. And it's, like, especially if you're, in a, if you're a guy, especially growing up in an immigrant household, like, mental health isn't that much of a... Sp like, you don't... It's, talking about mental health isn't that much... Isn't... Doesn't have that much awareness. So, like, if... As a guy, if you need to, if you have shit bottled up and you can't go to the gym, just try writing that shit down. Because I remember, I remember when I was in grade nine, these like poets came to us, uh, my grade nine drama class, and it's like, okay, guys, we have these like guest speakers. They're gonna talk. They're gonna put, send some poetry to you. And I was like, okay, like I get like no class for me. I'm just gonna chill back and relax. Then there was one guy. He was doing a button down, like dress pants, like dress shoes. So okay, this kid's gonna rhyme about some like like math or some shit, right? Because it was my preconceived notion of him. They start talking about, like, this one's for the rotten kid. This is for the kid that got bullied. This is the kid that had acne all over his face and couldn't make another day. Then he was, like, sp like talking this real shit, especially to high schoolers, right? Then, like, this one's for... I wrote this for myself. I hope you couldn't tell. Then, like, I'm like, holy shit. Then one of those poets said, like, if as a guy, like, if you ever need to... If you're ever having a hard time in life and you feel like you can't speak to anybody about it, just start writing it down. Then, like, that's what those poets did. They had a hard time in their life. And they started writing it down, then they turned it into something that, like, it changed my, my viewpoint of life, right? And that's all that matters. But, like, when these people came into my, they Like, if I never took that drama class, I would have never started journaling. But, yeah, that's my story. Journaling some real shit. And what, el what, el what else is, like, real shit is therapy. Right? Yeah. Therapy is legit. Like A lot of guys sleep on it, like, and it's so bad. But I feel like every guy could use it. No, it is. Like, and I know people who've done it who have like gone through it and like there's nothing but good things to say about it mm -hmm. you just need to find the right therapist right i mean yeah like if a therapist is a trained individual who will provide you a safe space to talk about your feelings mm -hmm. and talk about literally just anything you want mm -hmm. and you know in a sense like you can create that sort of space and like up like this yeah. But you're not going to have that, like, trained individual who, like, the knows... The proper advice. Who knows, like, how the mind works. Because they've, like, studied it. <laughs> it's like if you want to get better at a sport, you go to a coach. You go to a coach, of, yeah. yeah. Like, you, you know, if something's wrong with your foot, you go to the foot doctor. Yeah. If you go... If something's wrong with your heart, you, you go to a cardiologist. Mm. If something's wrong with your emotional state, you can go to, like, a therapist. Yeah. And, like, we need to normalize that sort of <laughs> relationship between, like... Here's something that needs fixing, and here is a trained professional exactly. who's trained to fix it. Because at the same time, like like you said, all of those things are muscles of your body. Your mind is also a muscle, and a therapist is just a trainer for it, if you look at it like that. Yeah, it's like, you can't deny the importance of mental health. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we can talk about mental health all day, but like if you don't talk about you know, therapy in the sense that these are trained individuals... Mm -hmm. Then it's like you're missing the point because like we can talk about it all day. You can post it on your Instagram stories all, all you want, want but, like, but that doesn't mean shit unless you're actually doing stuff. And that just applies yeah. to everything though on Instagram. Yeah, like everyone's everyone's a self-proclaimed expert. Yeah. Oh but my like, gosh. Like, if you're not, if you don't know anything about it, then 
like learn about it, then educate yourself about the situation, then talk about it. Yeah, and it's also like a lot of, <laughs> it's kind of funny like building off of that. Something that I noticed a lot is like, there's the type of person who will use the term, oh, I researched it. Oh my versus God. Versus like, versus like, like you mean Googled it? Oh, yeah. so you educated so yourself. What, so what type of academic scholarly resources did yeah. you use? Like, Peep, like, I feel like we need to like, normalize the term educating myself yeah like i've started using that too like when i there's a topic that i don't know about it's like oh yeah i'm still educating myself about it. like i'm not doing research like i'm not fucking yeah. in the field collecting yeah. data i'm literally at home or on my phone just scrolling yeah through Google. Going through i am educating myself but in the thing like a lot like that that term creates like you know this connotative like this notion that before you didn't know yeah but and currently you still don't know but you're building towards you know a place of knowledge yeah but you know when you're saying you know i i researched it you're like proclaiming yourself to be an shit. expert and like at that point it's like i don't trust you yeah and the whole thing it's like so there's this thing on six buzz it's like one of these guys john toy the mayor of toronto was just john toy right yeah he was just eating food then this guy's like oh how do you feel about all these suits like you're the reason why so much people are killing yourselves why are you like doing these lockdowns it's like why are you like you're putting all these draconian measures it's like if i was john toy buddy can you even define what draconian even means because i feel like these people they just hear like draconian nazi regime and they're applying it it's like you don't understand what these things means don't use it in a sentence and you're saying where's this research coming from where's this information you're like like you're uh, projecting onto these people coming from but that's just it's like nice. do you actually not like the guy or do you not like him because he's an opposing viewpoint right it's like hating the other slash hating the unknown mm -hmm. it's such an easy thing to do and it's such an egotistic thing to do yeah and it's versus like trying to understand where they're coming from yeah, because if one of the things I actually took in grade eight, during like it was the uh, uh, anniversary of nine eleven, right? Then my teacher he touched on it. He said like, uh, when people hate things, they don't give a chance to look at it, right? So I don't know if I use it in the right context, but like no, if you hate something, you don't, like if like that guy, I don't think he ever did research at all on like John Tory and why he did those. But the thing things, is, right? he doesn't. He fucking doesn't know John Tory. Exactly. That's what like, I'm saying. He, like, he and just, he doesn't even make those decisions. You, like, you see his name in the news, and you're like, ah, uh, yes, figurehead. Yeah, state, exactly. So blame this guy. But it, look, we live in a democracy. It takes groups of people. We those groups of people that we elected as people to make these decisions for us. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, but like, that's the thing. It's so easy just to like point a finger. And exactly, say, especially like, times like this. Like, I understand people are mad with all these lockdowns and COVID. But at the same time, these people are human beings and they're doing the best they can to protect the people. Literally. And like, obviously, like, is there like one specific person to blame? Mm -hmm. Like, probably not. Like, you can't just point a finger and say like, you are the cause behind yeah. all of that's this. That's scapegoating, right? Like, that's scapegoating and that's just like blame, that's just like being lazy. Mm -hmm. Like, realistically, educate yourself. With the problem Like, understand the problem. And don't be a part of the problem. Understand the problem on both situa both sides, too. Well, like, there's the problem, and then each side has their viewpoint and yeah. how to solve it. You just want to understand where each person's coming from, and then mm. form your own opinion. Don't just be like, I'm a liberal, so I'm going to go with whatever this guy says. Mm -hmm. Like, that is... I think that is... A, a slippery slope. Because often when you're doing research, you realize maybe like I'm on the wrong side of things. Because there's, there's this TikTok, it's like when you're doing an argumentative essay, then you realize you chose the wrong side to debate on. Yeah. Because right? it's like when you're doing research, it's like maybe I'm on the. Maybe but like hell, like side. if you realize that, fucking acknowledge That's it. That's good, right? Because yeah. you're putting, you're, re you're actually researching, you're looking at peer reviewed, you're looking at like, like public, like renowned, like uh, uh, authors writing about information that's like, like you validated. There are individuals out here who are literally experts in a specific field, mm -hmm. and whenever they say something about that field, and like it's peer reviewed, and you know everyone yeah. else agrees and the with other it, people like, in the field has similar opinion, uh, views on it. Like, what is some dude in his like mom's basement gonna say about that? That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, <laughs> and it's like these things. I saw this. I, I love how we keep talking about. I keep talking about TikToks. Oh, it's I love like, TikTok. It's like a. Uh, it's like, don't believe the news. Like, that's not real. Then it's like, okay, if the weather said it's going to be 23 degrees outside, are you going to be like, oh, no, I'm going to wear a jacket because I can't trust the weather, right? It's like, 
one of those things. Authoritarian bullshit. Literally, bro. Like, the fact that you're able to go to John Tory and debate about and, like, criticize him just proves the beauty of democracy. But realis realistically, that's an undemocratic way to treat the situation. If you want to, if you have something to say to him, do it at, like, scheduled listing hours for him. He's eating dinner at the time. Yeah. You know I mean? He's, he's a person, too, as with everyone. Yeah, but... And we all have, like... We all have shit to do, and we all have shit shit that we don't know people yeah. that we have to deal with, right? And, and we all have, that, like, prejudices towards different people. Yeah. Like, even we do, like... You can't deny it. Yeah. But... Yeah. Honestly, it's just, like... Live your best life. As long as it's not the expense of other people's happiness. That's one thing we yeah. took from... Yeah, I mean, like, to a happen. degree... Like, you can say that, because obviously, like... We, every like we are privileged in the sense that like oh yeah where we are right now people have to suffer exactly and like whether that be like people like from the homeland or or like the indigenous population any group here, of like, people yeah what what there there was a cost to what we have now even like blood had to be shed for us to be to be where yeah, we are even like look at nature like we had to destroy all of this nature to get all of this yeah like we destroy like we pollute the waters to like survive and it's so we extract bad. oil from the ground and destroy it to like drive our cars and then we release our it's emissions greed. into the into the atmosphere it's like obviously yeah there's a cost to it but there's you know, <coughs> it's just it's just, it's good to be mindful of these things mm -hmm. Like obviously no like well, like I said before like no one is individually responsible but at the same time if there's things you can do to like not be a part of the problem it's probably worth it to do those things. Mm -hmm. Interesting viewpoint. Yeah, and like it's just perspective. Yeah. I mean like everything that I talk about could be wrong. It could be miles off. Oh, one hundred percent. We'll fucking like what like. Look like, at our, like we have no like we're talking about politics. I'm an average like, dude. Literally happens to have a, an engineering and, degree. And like what do I know? You're about an politics. average dude with an, an opinion. That's yeah. Really it. And like if anyone wants to get like jaded based off of this, to each mm. their own. And it's like, well, like I'm a third year communication. I mean, I might switch my majors. Like who fucking knows, right? Like I don't know. It's like I remember it was this. I don't know if it was off. It was off some podcast. I don't know if it could be your friends. It's like. We don't, when we talk it's like oh like what do you do? like we define ourselves as the things we do when in reality that's yeah, not, not who we are. Yeah, we define ourselves by what we do, not by who we are. Exactly. That is the most fucked thing too. It's like who are you? It's like oh, I'm a communications major, but like yeah. that's not who, that doesn't define my personality trait at all. No, literally, like what does that tell me about? It's like you? oh, I can write papers for you, critically. Cool. Thinking. Like yeah. like what do you like doing on the weekends? Because like exactly. that's what I want to know. Like yeah, versus insane. like bullshit like that yeah that's the thing you start to realize that all these titles that you thought mattered don't matter exactly. and like well, what actually matters is too. like who that person is exactly. at their core versus like what what subject they took in school mm -hmm. like i'm gonna be like they'll all say this like oh if, like if i meet another guy with a communications degree we're gonna have conversation right but at the end of the day, I'm not friends with the guy because he's a communications degree. I'm probably going to be friends with the guy because of his personality, right? Yeah. You become... And that's, like, one thing I don't understand with racism. So, because they're a different color of me, I um, think I'm better than them. Thinking... So, I don't talk to them at all. That's just stupid. You talk to people because they're people and you vibe with them. If you vibe with them, then talk to them. doesn't matter if they're gay, lesbian, black, Asian, white. Like, we're, all, we're all human beings. Just vibe with the people you like. And yeah. if you don't like them for the personality, then okay, like <laughs> move on. Exactly. Live your life. You got twenty more. You got tw you got a lot more years to go if you wake up the next day. You know. Yeah. That's the thing. You can't get hung up on those things because uh, at the end of the day, like live your life and just like take in the beauty of consciousness. Yeah. Like, this is all you have. Mm-hmm. And just what you, know, you, you kind of just like. If you don't acknowledge it now, you're just gonna end up on your deathbed, real, and just like shook as to like what the fuck just exactly. happened. Exactly. Like, look how we are, look how beautiful it is right now. In 50 years, is the weather gonna be like this? Is that lake still gonna be there? That's a 50/50 bubble, but Who I'm knows? worrying about today. Who knows? And that's fucking scary. But like, hey man, I'm just gonna try to do my part to better 
my situation and the others around me. Yeah, it's like I have a community, and like I, I want to serve my community, but at the same time, I I want to live my life. Yeah. And I want to enjoy the things that I enjoy. Yes, yeah, so. You know, it's it's great to like try and make like global change, but at the same time, it's like. It's only a side. That's a huge scope. Yeah. You like know, ev- everyone has. Like, it's like when you're doing, like, a campaign mission on, like, the PS3 or PS4, like, there's a, there's a main mission and there's side missions you have to do in life. Yeah. And I feel like the main mission is life itself. Life and happiness. Yeah, like, that's the main mission. And then all these other, like, things in your life are just side quests. Yes, It's so like, they'll be there. They'll when, be there, yeah. They'll be there, like, whether you... No matter where you are on your main mission, pretty much, like... Mm-hmm. Like, the, if you want to, like, say you want to, like, learn how to fly a plane... It's gonna be you could start now. You can definitely learn how to fly a plane now. I actually or have, you can wait when you're 50. I have another question for you, actually. I'm interested. Do you think we every day... Uh, do you think our destiny is already written for us and we're just fulfilling it every day? Or do you think every day is a new day and every day is a new opportunity? Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Like, how I think about that is that we are, like... Like, everything's already written out for us, and we're just fulfilling it to the T. Well, every yeah. day is a new day, and we're just doing it, like, freestyling off the dome. I believe that time is, like, another... De- like, time, the dimension, mm-hmm. can be traveled. It's just that we, as, like, three-dimensional beings, can't. Mm-hmm. So, like, we just experience time versus, mm-hmm. like, living within the space of time, or, Some like, the plane of time. Shit. So maybe if we were like four dimensional beings, then we could traverse time. And like, then you could say like, oh yeah, time is like set in stone because I can like go off yeah. like 10 years in the future and like see it. But like, I guess if you agree with that, then you could say that, yeah, time is yeah. like everything is meant to be like where I will be in 10 years is exactly where I will be in 10 years. Yeah. Cause it's already like, in that space of time, if that makes sense. Because, uh, almost just like, you know, X, Y, and Z axes, like, we can travel them just as three-dimensional things. It's like, if you added time as, like, a fourth dimension and you were, like, a fourth-dimensional being, you could just easily traverse time because it's just another dimension. Mm -hmm. There was another thing, like, how you said, like, Time is just, time keeps going, right? So like, you just experience it. That's the thing, it's like you have a shit day or a bad day, but at the end of the day, tomorrow the sun's gonna rise and it's gonna, not, time is relentless to everybody, no matter if you're having a good time or a bad time. Like time, in my mind, is just a construct. Mm-hmm. Cause like realistically, there is no way to perceive time. Mm-hmm. You just perceive the present moment. The only way you can tell time is if you look at a clock. Uh-huh. Like, Cause there's no like the future like in a sense doesn't exist to you and the past doesn't exist to you in your consciousness thank you uh jordan <laughs> for being on my podcast and hopefully we'll have you on another episode yes sir